This video supported in part by Do you have fond memories of playing Dungeons and Dragons when you were growing up? Man, I know I sure do. Hanging out at the kitchen table with pencils and paper and dice and books strewn across, fueled by nothing but Funyuns and Mountain Dew. Just a, such a great time that I remember with my friends. And those same friends and I also loved kind of the birth of electronic board games that came out in the late 70s and early 80s as companies were toying with how to take our favorite franchises and make them digital. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. The gadget that I found just recently at a local toy show was this Dungeons and Dragons electronic labyrinth game released by Mattel Electronics. Yeah, the same folks that gave us the Intellivision put out this board game in 1980. I had never seen this, I had never played this. I wasn't even sure if it worked or if it was complete, but one thing was certain, I had to have it, and now it's in my collection. I'm ready now to share it with you. Let's head over to the table. I really can't wait to show you what's inside of this box, but we've got to take just a second to admire just the artwork that's on the box. Look at this TSR style dragon, this beautiful artwork on the front. TSR was always known. All their D&D stuff had great artwork on it. The back has a really good overview of what you can expect inside the box. You can see the game board here in the tile. Looks like a little castle. Uh, these little walls that go up in between the pieces and the, um, the metal figures that go on it. Luckily for me, right on the back, they include a full list of contents of what's inside the game down to how many individual pieces you have, which I'll be using to kind of inventory this and find out just how complete it is. I mean, the box is a little bit beat up and has some tape and some torn sections, but all things considered, it's in pretty good shape. And more importantly, it kept the contents in good shape. Let's get it open. <laughs> Would you look at this thing? I mean, absolutely impeccable. It looks like it was the first time out of the box here. I don't see any dings or chips or anything. One cute little design choice that I want to point out is that they put the speaker inside of this little tower. I mean, you could have put the speaker anywhere, but tucking it down inside of this tower, I think that's just clever. Initially, I was concerned, oh no, there's no parts on it, but it is rattling quite a bit. And then I found, ah, it's down here on the side. Check out this little drawer. Here is where all the parts and everything are. Now I'm gonna pull the little drawer just completely out for now so we can check out the bottom. We'll just set this aside. The bottom is mostly hollow, as you might expect. There's not that much electronics wise. Here's where that drawer slides in. And then check out this battery box. Absolutely pristine. Would you look at that? Like, look, there's no corrosion. It is in perfect shape, which is why it still works. And now I want to turn our attention to the contents of this little uh, drawer that has the instructions and all the pieces in it and find out what all we've got. So I can see we have the four metal figures we're supposed to have. That's cool. Uh, so looks like one little green token of some kind. These little wall pieces, got a whole bunch of those. And the instructions are still here. A little worse for the wear, but they're here. And I should mention the bottom of the drawer has basic instructions here. If you lose the actual instructions, which we have, you can go by this to kind of give you an idea of how to play. It's kind of a quick start guide almost. Now it's time to do a bit of an inventory to find out how complete or incomplete this game is. Now I knew before I bought it that all four of the metal figures were there. That's great. And it seemed to have lots of the other pieces, but I didn't actually run the numbers to find out what I had. There's supposed to be 50 of these little castle wall pieces, but there are only 42 and I I think we'll be able to address that without too much trouble. Now, luckily, since I'm not the first person on the planet to get one of these games and have pieces missing, obviously people had already created 3D models and had them out there in the world that I could download and create replacement parts for this. So I first set about printing some of those labyrinth walls using some red filament. I only needed eight, so I printed up 12 just in case anything went wrong. And here's the finished product. You can see there's one of the original labyrinth wall pieces, and here's one of the 3D printed ones. Works perfectly, sets just like it's supposed to, the right size, maybe not shiny but you could polish it paint it whatever point is i've got all the wall pieces i need and more 
And as for this little green sword token, well, this is supposed to represent the player's secret room. So you'll remember that one of the guys had a sword. This is the one for that guy. We are missing the green piece that represents the starting room for the player that has this mace and also missing the green piece that represents where the treasure is once you find out where the treasure is throughout the course of the game. But again, on the internet, somebody had 3D models. I grabbed those. I did have some green filament, not quite the exact same color green, but it did did the trick. There's the sword, there's the mace, and there is the marker for the treasure. Slightly different green, that's okay. So now that I have this game back to totally complete, even with some extra parts, thanks to some 3D printing, it's time to put a battery in it, power it on, and check out how it plays. I think it's really important to share with you the awesome sounds that come out of this thing. And luckily, there's a little soundboard down the side that you can tap and hear all the sounds in the game. So check this out as I tap through a few of them, just to hear these era appropriate, kind of Merlin-esque, Simon-esque, beeps and bloops that come out of this awesome little game. These just sound so cool. I've got to capture a few of those for ringtones and text tones for my phone. I think that would be wildly appropriate for a Gen Xer. Anyway, let's play a little bit of the game. Now, I'm not going to play the entire game here. If you'd like to see a full playthrough of the game, I put together a full video where I walk through an entire game from start to finish to try to save the treasure from the dragon. I'll put a link right up here in the corner. You can click on that video if you want to see all of it. But a quick overview. On your turn, you navigate through the dungeon, exposing the wall when you bump into them, and then you place these markers to show where the dungeon is. As you progress through your different turns, the labyrinth takes shape, and you now know how to make your way around in the dungeon. When you get close enough to the dragon, he will awake, and from that point on, at the end of every turn, he's going to move toward you. Now, the trick is you don't know exactly where he is, so you've got to kind of guess and triangulate where he might be based on where you exposed him and how many moves he's had. You have to kind of operate in the dark, and it can be pretty scary when you bump into the dragon and he makes that attack attack noise unexpectedly when you thought he was several spaces away. For what is a very early rendition of an electronic powered board game, this thing is a lot of fun. It's a random dungeon every time, so it's not the same. I mean, sometimes I'll buy gadgets like this just to look at them and play them once and put them on the shelf. I've already played this like a dozen times or so. It's just simply fun. This is not something that I'm gonna make a video about and then flip on eBay to try to make my money back. I'm so glad to have one of these, and I will go back and play it again and again. But because eventually this will be passed on to somebody else, we're not all on this earth forever, I wanna make sure that this is in as good a shape as it can be until the next person takes possession of it. I want to be a good steward of this game. Now it works. I have it clean. I've taken the battery out. I put all the pieces in these nice little Ziploc bags so nothing gets lost. I really want to do my part to preserve this game and make sure it's in better shape for the next person that owns it than it was for me when I got it. But they're not getting it anytime soon. They'll have to get it from my estate when I'm gone. Again, if you want to see more of this Dungeons & Dragons game, I'll put the full playthrough right here that you can click on and check it out. Man, I really hope you found something to enjoy in this video, though, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.